show with two L's, and I am one half of Force of Light Entertainment. I am here to give you my immediate reaction, my review to The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 3, or also known as Chapter 19, uh, The Convert was the name of this one. And I'm going to tell you that this review is going to be uh, very, I guess, lopsided or my thoughts. Again, I just finished watching the episode. Uh, you guys know I really enjoyed last week's. I thought it was a return to form and it was really beginning, I thought, to pick up and, and to get back to the level of what we expect from The Mandalorian. And that continued in the opening scene of this week uh, as we had Bo-Katan, Mando, and Grogu uh, getting off of Mandalore and being chased by TIE fighters. I thought the whole opening sequence was excellent. I thought, even though I knew they were all going to be fine, there was still a lot of... Um, suspense in, in that and, and it was shot very well and uh, everything looked really cool it looked pretty I mean the whole episode looked looked good uh but but yeah I really enjoyed that opening sequence and I thought the even the I, I thought the score of this episode was excellent and especially in that open opening sequence as well and I thought you know when the the Mando title came up like man this is going to be a good episode where's this going and then all of a sudden it it switches and we go to Coruscant and Coruscant looked very neat. Uh, they did a good job with Coruscant, which is always cool to see. Uh, but the but then and also let's point this out that this is the longest episode we've had of the season. It was in the, the 50 minute mark. Uh, so then. OK, so then we're in Coruscant. And we get Dr. Pershing from season one, the guy that was going to clone and or use ba Baby Yoda Grogu to, to clone for Moth Gideon. And we see his rehabilitation from the New Republic and what he's doing. And at first it was like, I was kind of like, oh, wow, because this was the first time, if you think about it, this is the first time in The Mandalorian that the story has shifted to like a different character for some period of time. And, you know, a lot of shows do that, especially with ensembles, nothing wrong with that. But this, this episode, uh, you know, after a few minutes of it, it, it began to get more, as it just kept going on, it got more and more boring uh, watching this episode. Basically, he, you know, he meets someone and it's kind of like, you know, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but in some cases you can judge a book by its cover because it was like so obvious that this person was not uh, like who they were claiming, presenting themselves to be. It was very, very obvious that this wasn't a good person. And, you know, you talk about, let's say with a show like, you guys know I love Stranger Things. Uh, Stranger Things is always in each episode working towards something. And there's also a lot of setup. There could be an entire setup episode in Stranger Things. But they make it very interesting, even in the setup episodes. And uh, they definitely, one way they do that, which is something I would have recommended with this, this episode wouldn't have felt so boring had they gone back and forth between Dr. Pershing and Mando and Bo-Katan. That would have made such a difference. And even with that being said, this definitely is a setup episode and, you know, set up payoff. So maybe there is a big payoff uh, down the road from this episode. But I can already tell you, this is the type of episode that I saw one time. And that's the only time I'm ever going to watch this. I'm never going to watch this episode again because uh, the entire part with Dr. Pershing was so it, it just kind of got boring. Because, you know, it's a character we don't really care about. Uh, I think he's definitely going to help further the plot. But as far as a character, it's not like we're really loving spending time with Dr. Pershing here. It's not why we we watch The Mandalorian. Uh, and again, I, I do understand that there surely will be a payoff from this episode. But that's why I go back to Stranger Things. Uh mix around, go, go from Dr. Pershing back to Mando. And that would have made the episode not feel uh, as boring as it did because it started really good. I thought it started very strong actually with, with Mando. And then I enjoyed the very end of this episode, but the problem is Mando got such little time in this episode 
for, again, for a character that we mostly don't really care about. I, I mean, again, I think he's going to be kind of critical probably to the plot overall. Uh, but do we want to just hang out with him? No, we really don't want to. That's not why people are tuning in to, to Man The Mandalorian. Uh, so that that's kind of my critique on this. Uh, I, I think they they should begin to, because I think you can do that. In fact, I've said that in the past. Uh, you can bounce back forth to different characters. Again, shows like Stranger Things do that so well throughout, you know, bouncing an ensemble cast. Uh, even uh, Andor, a Star Wars, that Star Wars show, the last one, it, it did that. It, it bounced around between an ensemble cast. You can definitely do that, but this was more like, it was like we're with Mando and Bo-Katan and Grogu, and then we have this massive period with Dr. Pershing. And really, you know, I kind of thought maybe they would kidnap him by the end of it, but I guess maybe she was going to fry his mind. I don't know at which point, or maybe try to, I don't really know what the goal is there. Make him hate the rebellion. I mean, the, the, yeah, the new Republic. I don't know. Was she frying his mind at the end? I'm not sure. So you kind of watch this long episode with him to feel like you definitely didn't get a payoff in this episode. Uh, but again, maybe you do get one down the road, but this just could have been done. It could have been edited and they should have made it bounce between the two characters, Mando and Dr. Pershing. And then I don't think this episode would have felt so boring. Uh, it, again, it starts good and it ends good, ending with uh, Bo-Katan being welcome in to Mando being redeemed. He's no longer an apostate. And them also welcoming in uh, Bo-Katan uh, to, to join them as long as she wants, since she also was washed in the waters of Mandalore. And I'm, I, I will say this, I think Bo-Katan has added a lot uh, to the show, and I really enjoy her character and her dynamic with Mando. Uh, so I was looking forward to seeing more of that. Again, the opening was excellent with the two of them, and I'm sure we will get more with the two of them next week. This episode, it kind of felt, again, back to Stranger Things. Uh, season two had that kind of infamous episode, The Lost Sister, that just felt out of place and no one liked and that's kind of what this episode in, in the series of The Mandalorian feels like to me, uh, because, you know, again, I did thoroughly enjoy that opening. But outside of that, this was by far, in my opinion, the most boring Mandalorian episode they've ever done. I, I think that's pretty safe to say, at least that, that is definitely my opinion. Um, but yeah. That's, that's kind of my thoughts on this. Uh, and again, there very well will be a payoff to the setup, but you just, you've just you got to set things up a little more interestingly uh, and maybe don't spend so much time with a character that we really don't know nor particularly find that interesting. Um, but yeah, that, that's my thoughts on The Mandalorian uh, Chapter 19, The Convert, also Season 3, Episode 3, known as that. But what were your thoughts on this episode? Do you agree with me? Did you enjoy the beginning and end and all that in the middle? You're just like, yeah, uh, I could do without this. Uh, or did you thoroughly enjoy it? I mean, again, there were positives. Coruscant looked really cool. Uh, the production design and everything is still seems to be top notch. And that that's always appreciated. It, my issue here was just more with the story in the middle there. Uh, but yeah, share your thoughts below. Uh, tell me what you thought of this episode, where you rank it. Oh, yeah. Let me give a ranking on, on a man, on a level of uh, entertainment, five hoots being the greatest. I'm going to give this like a two. And it's only getting a two because I really enjoyed the, the opening scene. Uh, it was, again, in my opinion, this was the worst Mandalorian episode they've ever had. Uh, but I do expect them to get back to go. And again, that that's horrible because there's only eight episodes. You just don't have a lot of time to waste in, in this series. Um, but I'm sure we'll get back to Mando and, and Bo-Katan and Grogu next week, which is what we were all looking forward to this week. And I'm sure, surely there will be a payoff to, to everything with Dr. Pershing in this episode. But yes, share your thoughts below. And if you have not yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also give the video a thumbs up. And as anyways, as always, ladies and gentlemen, remember to be a force of light. All right. Bye, guys.